Satu terbit, tiga pertanyaan, silakan angkat tangan. Satu dua, dua aja nih, yakin? Ya udah. Tolong sebutkan nama. Hah? Satu dua, udah kan? Udah. Udah. Lapor semuanya terlihat bukan cuma saya. Tolong sebutkan nama, asal instansi dan kepada siapa pertanyaan itu juga. Ya, nama saya Rally dari UNAIDS. Uh, saya ingin bertanya kepada Ibu Heather uh, terkait uh, kebijakan PrEP. Ya, kalau di Indonesia memang obat uh, ARV itu kan masih untuk treatment belum untuk pencegahan. Walaupun sebetulnya kita sudah mengenal sekarang treatment as prevention. Dan uh, kalau di Australia nantinya misalnya atau di negara yang sudah maju, apakah memang uh, PrEP ini pertama uh, dibiayai oleh pemerintah uh, sebagai program atau memang uh, pasiennya itu yang bayar sendiri karena kalau kita lihat dari health provider mungkin mereka juga masih ada yang punya konflik internal antara konflik profesional dan konflik value agamanya karena dia bilang mengapa kita harus membayarkan orang mau having sex bolak-balik uh, apa kita harus bayar pakai uang pemerintah gitu kalau mereka mau senang-senang bayar lah sendiri nah, begitu jadi uh, menurut saya bagaimana nanti uh, advice dari ibu Hena terima kasih uh, pertanyaan berikutnya boleh terima kasih pertanyaan juga untuk Miss Hena Hah? Namanya? Nama saya Dokter Riza dari Rumah Sakit Mama Rusin, Palembang e, Menyangkut pemberian PREP ini e, Bagaimana dengan resistensi obat yang mungkin akan terjadi pada pasien yang e, Statusnya negatif tapi sudah kita berikan ARV Sedangkan kemungkinan dia untuk melakukan kegiatan berisiko ini akan mungkin selalu berulang Karena dipikirkan ah, ah aman, ah aman, ah aman Akhirnya malah e, obat itu akan menunjukkan resistensi dan juga akan e, mempengaruhi pada penguatan berikutnya jika memang pada kondisi e, ke depan ya statusnya memang sudah e, menjadi positif terima kasih baik terima kasih e, karena ini pertanyaannya untuk ibu Heather semua saya persilakan ibu so, great question so the first question was about prep policy and overseas in other countries that have implemented prep who pays because it, it's a similar conversation in many other countries about subsidizing what some consider to be a lifestyle choice um, in Australia the argument that we used because I was part of government in Australia was that it was a public health intervention this wasn't about lifestyle this was about public health um, and so that was really, I think, important in, in having it as part of our national program. In Australia, when we, in, when we rolled it out as a national program, um, it's included under our national health insurance, but all medications in our national health insurance require a co-payment. Um, PrEP is no different to any other medication, it requires a co-payment. Um, in most other countries that have rolled it out nationally, there is often a co-payment that's involved. There's, um, it's not necessarily provided for free. In countries such as uh, Thailand, they have mixed models at the moment. So they have self-pay where somebody pays by themselves. They have some free programs where people are unable to afford it but really need it. And they have payment, they have um, a co-payment where they get a subsidized version of the um, of the drug. I think overall, usually making sure that people get an HIV test and that that is free, that they get STI tests and those are, are hopefully free, at least syphilis tests should be free, um, and hepatitis B tests. So making sure that those are free, um, I think is, is you know, very important. But having a co-payment is very typical um, in many countries. The critical thing to consider is about if you have a large proportion of people who would benefit from PrEP, and if it's a public health priority, setting the price at the right level. Because setting it too high means people can't access it. Many people, and I know that this is true for Indonesia as well, they're willing to pay for PrEP. 
but they also need to be able to afford to pay for it. Um, the second question was about resistance to um, a prep. So, um, generally speaking, the resistance that they found in studies ha um, happens. The, the greatest risk is when people um, start taking prep and they're already acutely infected. That's the greatest <laughs> risk. Um, so that's why HIV testing is really important um, at the beginning. So once if people test positive, then you put them on to antiretroviral therapy. They would only be on PrEP for a very short period of time before they were found to be um, positive. Um, the, so the other thing is that there are very few cases in the world with thousands of people on PrEP where there has been transmitted drug resistance. So where somebody has been on PrEP and been adherent and acquired HIV, and that HIV was already drug resistant. Um, there are only a very few cases worldwide for that. There is much, so if you're HIV negative um, and you're taking PrEP, you're not causing drug resistance. Um, it's only where there might be some transmitted drug resistance. And that's why regular HIV testing, even when you're on PrEP, is still really important adherence is also quite important. So as a clinician um, and as community, really emphasizing the importance of adherence um, to protect yourself and prevent onward transmission um, is really important. Thank you. Uh, hmm. Jadi uh, kesimpulannya adalah yang pertama itu uh, PrEP itu kalau di Australia dan di Bangkok itu dia uh, masuk dalam National Health Scheme tapi co-payment Kemudian uh, kalau yang pertanyaan dari Dr. Riza untuk resistensi obat PrEP itu uh, Risiko terbesar adalah ketika sebenarnya pasien tersebut sudah masuk dalam masa acute infection Tapi belum ketika ditesnya dia mungkin masih window period tapi dapat PrEP Jadi ada, terjadi resistensi sehingga yang penting di sini yang tadi uh, Heather Murray tekankan adalah Uh, HIV test dan kemudian sudah minum prep juga harus terus regular HIV test dan kedua adalah uh, adherence untuk uh, bagus masuk uh, minum prep sama seperti sekarang kita kan 1990-1990 untuk 90 yang kedua itu harus butuh adherence yang tinggi jadi kalau misalnya nanti yang kedua adherence yang masih buruk nah itu prep itu juga kita harus pertanyakan gimana nih audiensnya nya untuk misalnya yang neg -neg yang masih HIV negatif kira-kira begitu kita beri aplaus untuk seluruh tiga panelis dan kita masuk langsung ke sesi yang berikutnya dengan moderator saya panggilkan Ibu Merinda kita tepuk tangan dong buat Ibu Merinda yang